Ladies and gentlemen. Everybody wants the prize, but nobody wants to pay the price. Can they be pushed? Do they have a sense of urgency? Do they want to be great? And then of course you look at them and be like, yeah, right. Everybody wants to be on your team when you're on top. I saw the angel in the marble and I carved it until I set them free. Go be somebody, bro. But the most important part of the Be Somebody journey is the resilience. Welcome to the Be Somebody podcast, your real and raw destination for all things entrepreneurship, leadership, and culture with your host, Vikas Sandi, and our CEO and founder of Be Somebody Inc. and BSB Group International, Cash Shake. Welcome to episode eight of the Be Somebody podcast. Mad love to all of our listeners, supporters, and subscribers of our podcast. I'm your co-host, Vikas Sandi, with our founder and CEO of Be Somebody, Inc. and BSB Group International, Cash Shake. What's going on today, Cash? What's going on, Vikas? How you doing? <laughs> I can't believe we are already on episode eight. Yep, eight. You know? It's here. It's one of those things where it feels like we've been doing this forever. Yeah. But it's also like, how the hell are we already on episode eight, you know? Well, and people don't realize, man, like, these are productions. I don't know. Jordan comes in here and sits out there and just <laughs> chills over there in the back. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, just IG stories, man. Got, but we got the other guys. We got Herbie on the mic. We got Josh on the camera. We got Jacob sometimes in here doing the setup and the photography. Right. Samit, Nap on the on the ones and twos on the audio so uh, the and of one. course jordan being the maestro sorry jordan you know we have to mic up jordan y'all can't see him we have to mic him up but, <laughs> right 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 um, no it, it is a production and i'm really grateful for the team to come in here and, and put everything together and yeah. and just i always just get excited when it's podcast shoot day man. right exactly like it's something we look forward to now it's like yeah and you know i came in today and i was like Walked in and I haven't seen you in like since last week. And I was like, damn, I was like, Cash looks like you've lost some weight a little bit. I'm here gaining like all this like extra. I was going to say, because I mean, all that talk about chicken tikka. Right. You know? yep, exactly. I mean, you're taking it to heart. What that is quarantine that? 15. Yeah, oh, quarantine that. 15, yep. that COVID 15, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But no, man, I mean, uh, I don't know. I, mean, I think it might be, it might be stress. But the good thing about my health and wellness fitness routine is that it's very uh, mobile and it's very home based. Yeah. Because I pretty much run like you know I'm religious about getting my Every runs day. in yeah. five days a week. It's more for my mind and my body, um, just to reset. And I I always say running is one of my most powerful think tanks. Mm. You know, it's where I go to get creative inspiration, where I where I go to reset, where I go to burn off stress. Um, so I've been doing that, and I'm really lucky, man. I'm I'm really blessed because I just. I uh, moved into a new place a few months ago and I have a, a little home gym. Dope gym. Yeah, oh, yeah, I have a little home gym, so I've been able to work out, man. So I think, you know, a lot of my friends have been messaging me, the the folks that, especially on the East Coast, yeah. you know, like New York and Philly and, and Boston, people with, with smaller, you know, small apartments when you live downtown, they don't have the home gym and, yeah. and actually the apartment fitness centers are closed, things like that. Yeah. So they're like, man, I, 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 I can't stand not being able to get in the gym. Right, right. Especially in those urban areas, you know, there's, there's not a lot over here. You got the hills, you got all that scenery, you got the distance from everyone. Um, so it's, you know, it is a challenge, but you know, the at-home gym, I get to see all your IG stories and I'm like, man, I need to get mine together now. And, and with everything going on, it's- You're doing, you're, like, you're doing the, you know, biryani in one hand, yeah, that, that <laughs> Indian biryani on the left, like the, the biryani curls and the chicken tikka curls. <laughs> Cooking skills have been getting better, though. But I now, have been seeing though. your stories. I have been seeing your Instagram stories. So, people, if you don't follow Vakas Sandi on <laughs> Instagram, right? But is this Vakas Sandi? Yep, yep. That's it. You know, uh, Vakas Sandi on Instagram. Also, follow me on Instagram. Yeah, Cash course. underscore shake yep. on Instagram. And also, be somebody. Be somebody blog on Instagram. Man, how were we, how were we not giving our social right, handle shout outs? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Subscribe. Thank you guys, by the way, for, for listening and for um, subscribing. Yeah. Uh, Herbie, what we made? We made the top 50. We did make the top 50 uh, entrepreneurship podcasts in uh, in the U.S. So yes. uh, we're hanging in there. Num number 22 in India, though. On oh, just number overall. 22. Hey. All right. I was waiting for it. We need to get that sample on. Uh, we need to get that sample just man. Oh, man. Thank you, India. Thank you, India, for uh, top 20, uh, 22. What 22. Are we, 22. Yeah. And uh, no, I'm really grateful for us to be yeah. in the top 50 in the first eight episodes. And um, but we want to we want we want to crack that top 10. So let's yep. keep going. We got to get there. We got to get there. We've been fortunate enough to have guests on this um, podcast from the hospitality industry, from the spirits and alcohol industry, from healthcare, from grocery. Um, but one one area we we haven't touched upon yet, and I'm excited that we're going to going to today is fitness. 
right. that industry has been hit really hard. And um, the gyms that are going to come out of this, they've evolved and pivoted to deliver products to their members. They've started to charge, you know, a daily, you know, membership fee just to do an at-home workout with the trainers, with the enthusiasts to stay in shape. Well, you know, I've been telling you guys, I mean, I really believe that this pandemic, this crisis is for the creators. Right. You know, the great content creators are going to actually emerge out of this crisis in a lot of ways stronger than before. Right. And when I see even from a local gym standpoint or celebrity trainer standpoint. And when I, when I look at what health and wellness, fitness athletes and influencers and business owners are doing on social media, the ones who are committed to creating great content that adds value to people, um, they're doing things differently. They're still doing well, right? Because at a minimum, they're building their own personal brands or the brands of their business, which is going to help them once things open up again. Yeah, exactly. You know? But, exactly. but because people don't realize, I mean, the, the gym industry, you know, is a $30 billion industry, 30,000 wow. gyms across America, $30 billion industry. And when you look at the numbers there, I mean, according to ClassPass, 90% of the gyms and studios within their partner network have closed indefinitely. Wow. Gold Gym, everybody knows Gold Gym, yep. closed more than 30 locations for good. They said they're not opening them up again. And this was in Alabama, Colorado, Missouri, Texas, Oklahoma, North Carolina, South Carolina. Man. Lifetime Fitness, you know, so one of the more high end, yeah. uh, higher end of the spectrum. Used to have of, a membership. Of fitness and gyms. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're balling like that, man. I mean, I got my home gym. You're a lifetime. I mean, Keyword used to. Yeah. <laughs> you got that podcast salary, man. <laughs> but uh, no, Lifetime Fitness furloughed 90% of their employees. Hmm. Um, you know, so... A lot of gyms are are suffering or, and hurting. Think about again all the CrossFit gyms, all those local gyms that have to shut down. But on the flip side, this is one of those other issues and in industries that's got a little bit of a polarizing experience within this pandemic, similar to, to when we talked in episode five about alcohol industry. Because all the in in, in that industry, if you are a bar or a restaurant, obviously you're closed, so you're really hurting. On the flip side, people were stockpiling and kind of a hoarding um, beer and alcohol in the same way they were doing sanitizer and groceries. So, so those types of companies were, were doing well um, on the delivery side or the, the, the product sales side. In fitness, Tonal, anybody, y'all know Tonal, it's that yeah, 3000 like On the wall workout? Yeah, $3,000 on the wall, data-inspired kind of visual home gym yeah. system. Um, not cheap, three thousand dollars. Right. They've tripled in sales wow. since this pandemic hit. And Peloton, you know, you know, we talk about yeah. Jordan. You got a Peloton, so Peloton is actually doing really well. Their stock is up forty four percent in the last month. Man, so um, in the stuff. heart of this crisis, Peloton's you know stock is up forty four percent. So great. the home gyms and the home fitness aspect of fitness, some of them are doing really well. So it's it's crazy to see how this pandemic, this crisis is affecting not only so many industries, but the nuances of how it's affecting those industries is really fascinating. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, how you know, will more people go towards that at-home gym or will people be ready to go back out to the gym because they need that motivation, they need to be around people, they need to be in those group workouts um, and stuff. Well, so. and that's why, you know, that's why uh, I love who we're talking to today. Yeah. Because, you uh, 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 our guest is kind of on the intersection of both of those. And he's going to talk about it and share more of his story. But he's uh, a founder of a gym franchise and fitness franchise, fitness concept that actually brought personal trainers and fitness experts to apartment complexes. So you could go downstairs to the gym in your apartment and have that kind of personalized home feel but then also have a personal trainer there that was vetted and trusted through this larger gym membership or gym um, um, affiliation to teach you and train you. So he was he he's kind of he always knew the power of that, that the home gym aspect. But then he said, "Let me bring some trainers to you versus you going somewhere else." So I always thought it was a fascinating concept, and 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 I and I I feel excited because I haven't. I'm gonna say his name, Sean Martinez. I haven't talked to him in man four or five years. Because Sean was one of the original fitness instructors on the original Be Somebody app. 
And I was always inspired by his work ethic and his grind and his character. And it's just really his ability to lead and bring people together. And he's had such an innovative concept, which I, will, I don't want to give too much right, away, right, right. but I want him to share about. But he's had such a cool concept that brought these worlds together and made it easier and more, um, more accessible for people to get that expert fitness coaching and training. Um, and, and man, I'm, I'm really excited to hear about where, where he's taken his business and also just learn from and, and kind of um, empathize with what he's had to do and face during this crisis. Um, but man, very excited about this guest. Super excited. Want to really hear the whole story. And I love being, love hearing the journey when you connect with people from the back in the day, be somebody days, you know, from the platform there, especially when we were following it all. And just as a tribute, you know, oh, wearing the be somebody gosh, t-shirt shine again. Guy. Shine, I know you can't see us right now, but we're in the black t-shirt with the be somebody hashtag oh, yes, on it, sir, you know, to pay him, tribute. Do so let's give, do what we do. Give him a, give, give Sean an old let's, school be somebody welcome. Bacasa. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's welcome to the show a leader who started started as a personal trainer at Lifetime Fitness in 2007 and then became the founder and CEO of FX Fit in 2009 and rebranded as Gym Studios in 2017 and now has 65 fitness trainers and enthusiasts from Austin, Texas. Please welcome Sean Martinez! Yeah! Nap, we got him on the line? He's on the line. Oh, Sean, welcome. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, what's going on, brother? Hey, man. Good to hear your voice. Good, good to hear yours, too, man. I was just telling the guys, man, I can't believe it's been like six years since we shot your video like five, i mean it's been about six years since i've seen you man it you know yeah. it's, in some ways it feels like it was a, a lifetime ago in some ways it feels like it was just yesterday man but i'm so yeah. so so excited to get get reconnected and and talk with you today yeah man yeah i've been following you uh from a distance as well and congratulations on on your journey man it's cool to see you still grinding and still uh you know, setting, setting the bar. So Sean, I mean, before we get into like what, what's been going on with you and where, you know, how you're contending with the current pandemic, um, would love for you to give a little background on your personal journey. I know Vikas shared a bit about your progression, but just some person, your personal journey and, and how you got to where you are as a founder and CEO of Jim Studios. Yeah, man. So, um, you know, from Austin, Texas, I graduated from UT here in Austin, uh, back Welcome in horns. <laughs> yeah, 2007, and uh, we actually my if I left and I got my first gig at Lifetime Fitness uh, as a personal trainer, uh, kind of learning the ropes uh, on the personal training business, and I definitely you know kind of found some gifts there. I became one of the top trainers, uh, just really gifted in the, in the sales light and. Um, then from that point, I left to actually pursue nursing school, and um, I had a couple of clients on the side to kind of you know keep keep me fed during this nursing school uh, journey. And I had a couple of clients at an apartment complex in the domain in Austin, Texas. And, and what the domain is, it, it's kind of the, uh, a real estate uh, miracle that's kind of changed changed the market, the commercial market. But it's kind of mixed use restaurants, retail, uh, and apartments. And at the time, there was just this little bubble. It was one apartment and some restaurants, but it was a very prestigious uh, spot for a trainer. So uh, I had a couple of clients in, in this, you know, luxury apartment, tra you know, training them in the gym. And that's kind of when God hit me in the head with a light, light bulb of, uh, you know, this, this, is a, this is a great niche. I should, I should try to focus on this apartment, luxury apartment industry. And then, um, you know, with, with a little bit of money I had, I went and threw a brand on a business card and uh, kind of pitched myself at the next apartment that, that popped up and, uh, and nobody I, was doing yeah. that at the time, were they, Sean? I, I don't remember anyone doing that before I met you. No, man. It, it, it's, it's funny how easy it was back then, too. <laughs> there had no competition whatsoever. That's great. Um, but yeah, yeah. So that's kind of kind of where it all started. I went and pitched myself at this new apartment complex and uh, said, I want to be a trainer in your space and uh, I will take care of it like it's my gym. 
And all I ask is that you allow me to train my clients here. And, and, that, and they said, yes. And that's kind of how, how it all started. And so was the business model that the apartments would pay you or the clients would still pay you? Yeah. So that, that was kind of the beauty of, of the concept is that uh, it was a barter. So the apartment at the time, the apartments didn't pay me anything. I just used this spot as it was my own. But what they got out of it was I was there all the time. I mean, I was full time staff that they don't have to pay for. So I take care of the gym. I was like this concierge, uh, add this professional presence to the gym. And um, yeah, that's kind of what the arrangement was. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's similar to when we pivoted because even when we did the, the, our, our be somebody paths back in 2017, because what you enabled was for those gyms or for those apartments to have no overhead yet still elevate the experience and really become an, an elevated amenity that they were offering to their residents. So just a genius, like I love the simplicity of the model and the genius behind it. Yeah. So, and it's, it's, and it's funny because a lot, a lot of, chapters in my story is I can't really take credit for any of the, the genius. Like <laughs> I, I didn't really, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just, I mean, I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing half the time, but um, I was kind of just, you know, ahead of this really interesting niche and interesting market. Um, but yeah, that was back in 2000, you know, uh, nine, I guess I would mm -hmm. say. And uh, around, and that, I kind of just did the personal training thing, got busy, hired an assistant, and then my assistant started getting busy. So, and then our, and then around that time, our reputation started to spread. So other apartments were like, that's a cool operation. Let's get it over here. Um, you know, that carries you, carries us back kind of like into 2011, 2012. And then I started to realize we kind of had a company starting to get built. Um, uh, so that's when I incorporated, it was in 2012. And uh, we were kind of doing the personal training grind. So that was picking up, hired a couple more trainers. So we had like five or six trainers and we were just kind of deployed amongst two or three apartments, but we were doing really well. Everyone was making some money we were creating a buzz. And then that's when the group fitness uh, curve started hitting, like CrossFit started getting really popular, right, right. you know, shortly, shortly after Orange Theory. So we evolved and started offering a group fitness service to apartments and started offering group classes. Uh, and that really took off. And that's usually, and that's kind of what woke other people up to start competing with us. And then now yeah. there's like an industry in the apartment fitness space. Um, and yeah, we've just evolved over time. Now we, we also do events for the apartments. We have this really cool local nonprofit platform where we help facilitate uh, people to go serve on, and volunteer. Uh, but we've just had to get creative with our pitch. And, and, and we are the most expensive version of, of this concept. We're kind of a boutique uh, style of, of what this apartment concierge apartment fitness management is. So uh, because of that, we're very elaborate, uh, very kind of white glove version um, of, of this kind of these apartment fitness stuff. And what, and what was the strategy that you guys had to place yourself at the more high end of that pricing and value continuum? Because it's always been about relationships, man. That's that relationships has always been our currency. I and mean, you guys have kind of touched on that. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't want to be volume. I didn't want to just be like at every apartment in the U.S. I, we've always been very selective of like what properties we partner with. We, we want to make sure the gym is hospitable for personal training. We want it to be kind of top notch. Uh, we we, we want to pick property managers that were that kind of believed in the vision so we can work together and really kind of be a blessing to all the people that live there by doing some really cool programs and, and just be creative in this space. So we weren't really in a rush to grow. We wanted more the right partner. If right. That makes sense. Yeah, no, it to totally makes sense. And I, I think about even the other side of our, our be somebody ecosystem, BSB group international, where we work with um, different clients, you know, fortune 500 companies and things from the management consulting and brand building side, Sean. And, that's the same philosophy we have is like, we don't want to have, you know, hundreds of clients, you know, we're not on that agency grind where we want, we want to have, you know, win the quantity game, but we want to have clients that we share a vision. We have a, a shared passion 
and we, you know, we just go deep and, and across the board with them. Um, so no, totally can relate and, and, uh, and, and love actually love that approach and strategy that you guys took to it. Awesome, man. Thank you. And, and, and Sean, how many locations do you guys have? And are you guys just in Austin? Like where are you located now with gym studios? <clears throat> yeah. So we have about 20 locations now. Uh, we're pretty saturated in Austin, but we're also in Dallas and we have, uh, locations in Arizona, Tempe and, um, Phoenix. You guys transitioned in 2017 from FX fitness to gym studios. So what was the, the reason and the rationale for that rebrand or change in, in messaging? Um, <laughs> kind of, kind of an interesting story actually. Um, so, you know, FX fit was our original kind of DBA and, right. um, that that's kind of how we started. And I actually ha was thinking about rebranding because at the time we did FX fit the, we were m very much trying to be a fitness company. Um, and as we've evolved, we, we realized that we're much more corporate. We're more like a fitness management company. Uh, so I had some intentions of rebranding, but, um, we, we got a very, uh, interesting email from, uh, CrossFit legal, mm, wow. <laughs> uh, basically threatening to, to sue us for trademark infringement. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, which was really confusing because I right. didn't understand the connection. I was like, I, we do like, we're not even like, we don't did, even have Did you set, did you respond with the middle finger emoji or like what, what was the response? <laughs> well, I, I ignored them for a couple of weeks and then they started getting uh, pretty aggressive. Mm. And that's when I sought, sought legal counsel. And apparently they kind of do this. Like, they have, they have like a legal team that just goes around this, you know, kind of smaller guys and tries to, they're very protective with their, mm. with their brand. So, but basically the, their argument was, uh, you know, when, you know, with social media at the time, like a few years back, CrossFit, people would shorthand CrossFit with X fit. Right, 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 right. So their argument was that <laughs> we were saying we're F CrossFit. Ah, uh, wow. Yeah. So Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even think about it that way. Think. Wow. <laughs> Got yeah, it. Okay. So, th so that's that. But so that was kind of the catalyst. They're like, okay, well, I thought well, I was going to rebrand, you know, next year, but I guess we're doing it not, <laughs> you know, over the next couple months. So, but it ended up being a, a huge blessing in disguise because um, the the perception of Gym Studios has been so solid. Like people really like the brand. I mean, and I so happen to have gymstudios.com and it's really helped yeah. us out on, you know, SEO and all kinds of things that we didn't really plan for. So it's been, it was a blessing in disguise. Coming into the present time, you know, with the, with the pandemic, with the crisis, how have you pivoted your company um, to kind of stay afloat? Yeah, man. Uh, well, even, and, and sorry, just to jump in, Sean, like even uh, like, how has it affected you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and this is, this is a, a good, good opportunity just to be vulnerable, man. Cause I feel that, you know, there's probably some, companies that that uh, have it all figured out and you know we're the company we're one of those that don't we're just right we're taking it day by day and that's kind of been my theme like i need to get a t-shirt made it's <laughs> just like day by day because um yeah march 13th uh you know coincidentally was our family my family vacation we do a beach trip every year and we were literally on the road and then i my emails started getting blown up and then the media was that's when the media really started to kind of like panic people about lockdown and, and all this stuff. And we started losing uh, gym access. Mm -hmm. So I was literally driving on the road to Florida, like all this happening. I had so much anxiety. I was so confused. I couldn't really sleep for the next couple of days. And then things just got worse like that whole week. And this was when we were all on the beach and I was trying to balance with like how much to, to turn my attention to my family during this time. And then also like, how much should I actually be worried? Right. Um, so by the end of the week, you know, a hundred percent of our locations were shut down. Mm. Um, our, the way we make money, we, we make money two main ways. The, the apartments pay us, uh, you know, a fee for our program. And then we make revenue from our trainers, our personal trainers. Right. And without gym access, we literally lost 50% of our revenue overnight. 
um, you know, I wasn't going to take a penny from, from our, our trainers if, if they were going to be able to get access. So I had to rethink how, how we were going to hold on to our trainers. That was kind of the first, uh, the first game. Um, so we kind of pivoted and figured, figured out what, what valuable assets does gym studios have, you know, technology, marketing support, design, how can we love on our trainers and actually be a resource for them? And then we need to put a very conservative price tag on that. And that's what we did. So we, we uh, basically are charging our trainers a very, very conservative fee to just be affiliated with us during this time. And we're just supporting them, but it's also uh, an investment on their end. Cause you know, in good hopes that once this lockdown's released, they can jump back in. Um, and, you know, I've been lucky that a lot of our trainers just believe in me as a leader and I believe in us, the, the brand. And I think a lot of them are just investing in us. Right. So they're, so, you know, that's been such a humbling and sobering uh, pivot for us is just the trainers that are, are sticking with us. Um, and that's kind of the, the first uh, battle or, um, and I'll, I'll stop there if you guys have any questions. Or want me well, to no, I think, I think it's, I mean, obviously, I mean, when you think about a hundred percent of the, the gym access being lost, um, you know, overnight, it, it's a huge hit to the business and huge hit to the model, obviously a, a devastating blow really. And I think that I love the fact that your first strategy was how do we retain our trainers? And then my question though is, is did you guys quickly start to say, okay, how can we coalesce with a digital, you know, social media driven campaign or marketing strategy, content strategy, you know, uh, to retain our clientele and or build our brand? We were talking about that at the top of the show that I've been saying, Sean, that this pandemic is uh, for the creators. It, it, you know, people will remember the best content creators at this time, those people that can actually add value because since everybody's locked up and staying at home and we're all consuming more um, social media and, and, and digital tools than we ever have before. And I was just saying, checking last week, I got that the app notification. My screen time was up 89% from the week before and the week before it was up 70%. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. we're, we're all, you know, locked to our phones. Was that a key part of the strategy as well? Oh, definitely. Um, so, you know, one of one of the I think the main uh, values that we're, we're bringing to the table for our trainers right now is just helping them create social media content. And, uh, you know, we have this inter internal design team that we uh, that we have and we've just been pumping out stuff that we've never pumped out before just kind of like really digging into i mean kind of reminds me of what you guys did with be somebody i mean you guys had uh you know way better resources than i did but one of the things i really respected about the, the be somebody uh chapter that i was you know part of was you guys took the time to interview and put this really high quality production of just like people getting just Tell it, talking about themselves, like what right, makes right. them, what makes them them. And I feel like there's so much power in that. Right. And that's kind of what we're doing. We're trying to like, what, what makes these people unique and not as trainers, but as people. Right. And then we're trying to pump that out to the world and try to get them some business. That's, and that's kind of in our approach. Right. And you know, I, I, we were talking to a, a client and partner of ours yesterday. And one of the things I said uh, during our discussion, because they're, they're, they're a business that's been really hurt by this pandemic, as many are. Um, they are in a similar place as you and your company of like, hey, we believe, but it's a day-by-day -day type of thing. They lost most of their distribution. They're, they're a consumer product company. And, and, and we were talking about what we do. Like they, they want to know um, how do they position their marketing. You know, I really believe that brand equity, brand purpose you know, what your brand believes, what your brand stands for is so important right now. Yep. And, you know, this is the only time in definitely in our lives, definitely in this generation, most likely in the last century, yeah. that everyone in the world is experiencing the same thing at the same time. You know, 
we're all feeling the same thing. We have the same fears, the same anxieties. And we also feel for our, you know, our neighbors, our colleagues, our businesses, our, you know, our, lo our friends that run local establishments that are going through this. So now is a time where actually people are rallying together. People do believe we're in this together. And I really believe that the companies and businesses that double down on purpose and values and, and show, you know, who they are in a positive way are going to be rewarded with business after this is all over. Yeah, I totally agree. For you personally, obviously we talked a lot about how it's, you know, how you're protecting and investing in your personal trainers and your staff. How has this affected you personally? Oh man. Uh, yeah. So after, after that, you know, Florida trip, we, we, we drive home and, you know, that the first Monday back to work facing pretty much when I was in the thick of it. I mean, I, I was not in a good mental place, man. Like I, the best way to describe it was deer in the headlights. Like I, I, I didn't know what to do. I was shock. I was in shock. I was kind of in denial about it. And then I also just didn't know what to do. Um, and it was actually my wife who kind of, uh, kicked me in the butt a bit. She was just like, you got to do something, right? She just said, you, you can't be quiet. Right. You have to do something. And that's when I like jumped on the social media stuff. And that the, the, one of the first things I did was, uh, I mean, our social media was, was managed on a very high level right before all this. Um, I, I didn't touch it right. much. So one of the first things I did was I basically just sat in my garage, I have a really good home gym garage set up. So I kind of had that as my backdrop and just, uh, took nice. it, you know, had some coffee in my hand and I just kind of like, just spilled, spilled it out vulnerable. Like this is where I'm at. This is, I don't have it figured out, but this is how the company, this is what's on our plate right now. This is what we're doing. And I kind of just had this heart to heart. Um, and the response was, was really encouraging. Uh, so many people reached out and, and that was, I think, kind of the motivation that I needed to kind of just get in there and, and do it. Um, and and I will say, um, you know, when you talk about your your posts on social media, I mean, I think that's how we reconnected because I saw it. You know, I saw you post something on LinkedIn, and I did really appreciate the authenticity and honesty behind it. And in my life, you know, this be somebody journey in the last nine, you know, nine ten years, I've always seen Sean that like whenever you're the most vulnerable and just real and raw with what you share. Um, all those times where I was like very nervous to hit publish or post on a post because I'm like, man, I'm being so honest. I'm sharing my soul. Those are the posts and those are the messages and those are the stories that connected the most with people. And, and, and it wasn't about the likes and the comments. It was the fact that somebody said, man, thank you so much for sharing that. Like that really impacted me or, Man, your story really motivated me or moved me or, hey, I'm feeling that too. So I think there's so much power, like you said, in, in being courageous enough to be vulnerable. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, that's kind of you know, one of those things that I has. I don't, I have nothing but my vulnerability right now. <laughs> like, so like, I got to use that. And, and, and yeah, but you're right. I mean, I, by, by God's grace, I definitely got got through it just, just by being a vulnerability gave me strength. One of the first things I did was talk to our leadership team. Um, just let them know that, look, I, we've, we've lost more than half the company. I am. So therefore we had to lay off a couple of people immediately. Uh, the money that we did have, um, we were able to sustain the, the, the some of the, <clears throat> the team, team leaders. And then, it was like just a moment of, all right, well, what, what can we do? What are our assets? What, how can we make money right now? And the last six years I've been designing and equipping gyms. Um, so I kind of, I'm, I'm CEO over gym studios, but I also, my consulting business really started to take off about five years ago. And I work you know, hand in hand with apartment developers and I designed the space and then, and then once it's built, once the, the gym's installed, that's when our team comes in and we do what we do. So that's kind of been the growth approach. Um, but because I've been in that space, <clears throat> and ironically, 
In December, I ventured into home gym designs and I started doing a lot of garage gym build outs. So I just flipped gears and that I've been hitting that hard. I've just been selling to the home user and we've been selling fitness equipment and that, you know, I think I sold like $10,000 in four days and, and then I just, just kept on hitting it. So that has literally been our life raft, man. I'm just, I've just turned into this old school, like hustle salesperson. Uh, and then I'm back to the roots, back man. To the back roots. to the roots. Exactly. So, yeah. So yeah, man, that's been keeping us afloat. And, but the thing is, is we've become a completely different company. Like overnight, we've had to pivot. We're virtual streaming all our fitness classes. We're online all the time. I'm selling fitness equipment. Like, so our whole operations are basically like thrown out the window. We're rebuilding all and redefining everyone's role. Um, it's, you know, 20 hour work days. It's just been nuts, man. Appreciate the transparency and, and we're all with you. And we, you know, we, I know I, I speak from the guys because I can see it in their eyes. We yeah. we really believe in you and 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 the resilience that you have. So I I know that um, just like your the trainers that believed in you, um, you know I know you guys are gonna see through this storm. But before we we wrap up, um, I'd I'd love to just get your take on what you feel the post coronavirus world will look like within the fitness space. There was a shift of a lot a lot of trainers shifting to this online world, mostly because being a trainer, you're capped. You can only make so much money. And, uh, you know, trainers who just love to train um, have been able to kind of to, to ladder and move into this virtual space and not have this cap. And, and now everyone's doing virtual training. So I feel like um, I feel like because of that, you know, the, the fitness training space is definitely going to be a different ball game. Um, and with the common user in the gym, I don't know. My prediction, I feel like it's such a coin, it's such a coin toss because a lot of the connections I made in the gym were people that were. I have to speak to the more of the luxury apartment, right? You know, so um, a lot of the residents that live in these apartment communities are kind of lonely. And the gym was this place just for them to just, you know, get social. Because of that, I, like, I know that people miss going to the gym just for the social on it. So whether or not, you know, the fear of being in the gym is going to be, you know, overtake that, I don't know. My prediction is that, that the gyms will probably be pretty pretty packed. I don't know. I, I'm predicting that it's going to be like a New Year's resolution type of thing. Yeah, I was just <laughs> um, about to say that. Yeah, January 2nd, everyone's back in it. No treadmills. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but man, I think that, but the industry, I feel like the, the way that fitness business is, is definitely never going to be the same. Well, man, you know, if there's anything that I learned through this, the journey that we've been on, because, I mean, we had more failures than we had wins and, and, and victories. We had more, um, losses for sure on this journey, but you know, the mentality was always keep going, you know, and I always tell people, I, I always thought that be somebody journey was about passion, but that was just the beginning of it. That was the original fuel. The real uh, essence of the journey was about resilience. Me too. I totally agree. Well, well, awesome, Shama. Hey, man, it's so so great to reconnect with you. So great to for, to hear from you. Thanks for sharing everything that you guys are going through and 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 being so uh, honest about your story. We're all we're all behind you. Um, we're gonna follow up with you to see how we can help. We'd love to help you and and your team at Gym Studios uh, continue to persevere through this this pandemic. But um, all the best in the meantime, Sean, and and thanks again. Thank you, guys. Man, it's always great to hear from people that you've connected with the, on the Be Somebody journey, you know, back in the day and now reconnecting with them and hearing where they're at right now. But Cash, you know, the one big thing at the end of our shows has become something that our listeners are looking forward to and they love taking it away with them and, and they reshare it with us um, in IG right. messages, DMs, whatever it is. What's what's the one big thing for with this conversation, well, I don't, I don't want to know about your DMs. That's for sure. <laughs> I want to steer clear of your DMs. But I really loved how he talked about how they were strategically and authentically focusing on 
the few most important relationships that meant most to them uh, personally, professionally, people that shared the vision, people that understood the mission. And, and really, that's what we've always tried to do at Be Somebody and BSB. You know, I talked about it when we, when we were speaking. I said, we don't want a, you know, 100, 1,000 clients. I mean, there's a lot of businesses that say, you know, and that is their model. And we respect it, is that they want as many people, as many partners, as many clients as possible. But for us and where I've seen the most value in, in, in our journey and, and even in my personal life is, is taking the time to really invest in those select few. You know, I used to always say, all I need is a starting five and someone to come off the bench to shoot the three. You know, <laughs> that's all you need. You don't need a lot of people. You just need the right people. Right people. And uh, when you have the right people around you, the people that believe in you, the people that will push you, the people that will call you out, the people that will stand by you when times aren't that good, um, then you have a powerful weapon in your arsenal. Right people, right relationships. Thank you, Cash, for sharing the one big thing again with us. And thank you, everyone, for listening to the Be Somebody podcast, episode eight. Don't forget to check out all of our audio and video episodes at BeSomebody.com. And also don't forget to subscribe on all of the major platforms, Apple, Spotify. We out. Thank you. you.